الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده وعلى هذه وصحبه ومن تمسك بسنته إلى يوم الدين وسلم التسليم الكثير أما بعد As we continue and this tremendous treaty is entitled Fatwa Al-Hamawiyah Al-Kubra by the great Imam Abu Al-Abbas Taqid Deen Ahmed Ibn Abdul Halim Ibn Abdul Salam Ibn Taymiyyah Al-Harwani in Dimashqi in Numayri Al-Mutawafa Sanatah Sada'i Mi'a Thamal Al-Ishri The one who died 728 at the migration of our Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasalam We were still in the affair pertaining, I'm sorry everyone, with the time now is 7, 7.52 p.m. Hello, time's fine. Wednesday, March, March now is it March the 15th? This is March the 15th. Technically, in regards to the Hijri calendar, where it is now the, tw- excuse me, where it's technically the 24th of Sha'ban, the evening of Thursday, the year 1444, after the migration of our Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam. We were still in the affair pertaining to what Shaykh al-Islam, Ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah, mentioning the great scholars of Islam that's binding upon all of us to familiarize and be very acquainted of, because these were the people which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed to be from the reasons of why the religion of Islam was preserved and why and why it was spread amongst the dunya. And for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, starting with the companions and the Messenger of Allah, alayhi salatu wasalam, and then sacrificing their lives, their children, sacrificing their time, sacrificing their state of relaxation, all for Islam and the pure orthodox Islam to be spread in the four corners of the dunya in addition to those who they passed it on for those who they passed it on was the great ulama of what Shaykh Islam mentioned from their names and from their names was the great Imam Abu Sulaiman Khattabi Rahimallah and also the great scholar Abu Bakr Abu Bakr Ahmed ibn Ali ibn Thabit al Khatib of Baghdadi, Rahimallah, and all the great works and services that he sacrificed and put forth in order to service Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's religion and the sunnah of our Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. And they were the great scholars in which if they were to speak, then it would have an impact, an effect on the people based upon the fact that they were upon, they were upon the pure aqidah and the pure Orthodox, Orthodox Islam that the Messenger of Allah was sent with. And that affair that they were upon, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put barakah. He put blessing in their statements and in their works and in their efforts in order for Allah's religion to be superior in the earth. We mentioned from the other names. And like we talked about some of the great works, and the great books by the great Imam Abu Bakr Al Khatib al Baghdadi, rahimallah. We mentioned from them, from his great work, was entitled Tariq Baghdad, the history of Baghdad. And Baghdad, subhanAllah, if he was to read its history, it would be a mafkha. It would be a place where the Muslims used to be proud of, of what it possessed, of all the, the latest, and where they were at the forefront of all what the Kufar wanted in regards to, to knowledge. In regards to dunya, they had knowledge of medicine, they had knowledge of the religion, they had knowledge in regards to certain affairs pertaining to those matters of the stars. And we're not talking about as far as the astron or the astrology in those matters, or polytheism, we're not talking about that. But they were scientists, they were at the forefront as far as in medicine, they were in the forefront as far as in religion, they were in the forefront as far as in so many matters. And even their technology at that particular time, they were still at the forefront. That is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed them with. But what was the thing that brought that barakah? It was them holding firm to the pure Islam. That was the foundation. 
in which Allah, as a result of it, blessed them in other affairs of their lives. But the first thing that had to be rectified was what they were upon of the religion. And then after that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala started blessing them in their worldly, worldly matters and their mundane affairs. طيب. They're a great scholar from that region, from which is current day Iraq, when the city called Baghdad, Al Khati al Baghdadi authored, authored the book entitled The History of Baghdad, in which you'll find that Ahl Ilm mentioned that if that would have been the only book he had written, that would suffice for him as being from the great scholars of Islam. And despite of that, he wrote a hundred other works. From them is the great book Al Kifaya fi Ilm al Riwaya. From them is the book. Uh, from them is the book Sharf Sharf Ashab al Hadith. From them is the book Al Faqih al Mutafaqih. From them is the book Al Rahla fi Talb al fi Talb al Hadith. From them is the book Taqiyid al Ilm Tanan of the numerous beneficial authors and treaties that that great Imam wrote Al Khatib al Baghdadi, in which you'll find Sheikh al Islam al Taymiyyah, rahimahullah. Mentioning his creed and what he believed in regards to the names and attributes of Allah, that his creed was upon what the Messenger of Allah and the companions were upon. Of affirming the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without any without any distortions, without any negations, nor likening likening them to the creation or resembling them to the creation, that you'll find that he was exactly upon with those scholars of the past, who the Sahaba passed their knowledge on, passed their knowledge on, that Abu Bakr al-Khatib al-Baghdadi, rahimahullah, was upon that same affair. So you'll find, as we've mentioned everyone, and we'll continue to mention, all the other great people from the scholars of the past, from them was also Abu Bakr al-Isma'i, which was a book that we were considering, teaching, because his book to this day is Matbu'ah, it's mutadawa, it's available, and it can be purchased, and it's not that, it's not, it's a treatise that's not that big. It's about maybe 15, 20 pages. It was called a book entitled, The Aqeedah, The Aqeedah of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah by Abu Bakr Ismaili, the great Imam. And from one of the brothers from Layla, they told me that, that Sheikh Ubaid, my father, Sheikh Ubaid al-Jabili, rahimahullah, that he has an explanation of it, of this tremendous treatise entitled uh, Aqeedah or the Aqeedah of Ahl Sunnah of Jama'ah by the great Imam Abu Bakr al Ismaili, al Ismaili, which was a book that, alhamdulillah, I was able to finish when I was in Kuwait after the University of Medina, after I graduated. I went to Kuwait and spent some months there and finished a couple of books, and from them was this book. Was the, the book entitled Aqeedah Ahl Sunnah of Jama'ah by Abu Bakr al Ismaili. Rahimahullah. Also, we talked about last class, Al Imam Yahya ibn Ammar al Sijzi. Al Sijzi. We talked about his tremendous book last class. We also talked about the book entitled Dhab al Kalam al Ahl by the great Imam Abu Ismail al Ansari al Harawi. That you'll find that the great Al Adama ibn Iksalam, the great Imam Al Adama ibn Qayyim. That he well took the book and he paved it and he summarized it and it was entitled Madad Jis Sadiqeen. It was originally from the book by Abu Ismail al Harawi, which was entitled Manazir al Sa'ideen. Al Alam ibn Qayyam came to that book called Manazir al Sa'ideen by Abu Ismail al Harawi. He came to the book, he came to it and he kind of smoothed it out. He smoothed it out. And some of the mistakes that were in it, it was removed, even though you'll find that Ahl Ilm said that even though Ibn Al Qayyim smoothed it out a bit, there still was a little ma'akhir, there was a little mistakes that were still in it. But Al Alama Ibn Al Qayyim came, he smoothed it out, and he took all the, if you want to say, the rough edges out of it, and he called it Madaj al Sadiqin, as we talked about. Even though Ahl Ilm still to this day say that the book still had a little bit of mistakes, but Ibn Qayyim serviced the book in a great way. 
But despite of that mistake in that book, the great Imam Abu Ismail Harawi was from those great scholars of the past until he brought another book entitled Dhab al Kalam wa Ahle, the condemnation or dispraising the people of rhetoric or the people that have been affected by Greek philosophy and Greek, Greek philosophy and all those type of affairs that were adopted from the Greeks, from Greek, like we said, philosophy, and Greek, like we said, not mythology, mythology is shirk, but Greek philosophy, and mantik, and logic, is all those adoption of those affairs that were adopted from them was called kanam. It was called kanam, meaning the people that have been affected by rhetoric pertaining to Greek logic and philosophy. You'll find that Abu Ismail Harawi came and he wrote this book in order to condemn them. To condemn them and to what? Dispraise them until the people what? Well, had some insight and clarity not to take knowledge in this regard so their aqidah or their belief would not be affected. That's what we mentioned last class in brief. Tayyip. Shaykh al-Islam Taymiyyah also talked about the great Imam Abu Uthman Ismail Abu Abdurrahman al-Sabuni and Naysabuni. Talked about him last class. So we'll talk and we'll continue now today. So Shaykh al-Islam Taymiyyah, rahimahullah, everyone, he goes on to say, وَقَالَ أَبُوْ نُعَيْنِ الْأَصْبَحَانِ أَبُوْ نُعَيْنِ الْأَصْبَحَانِ We'll talk about him in a minute. Abu Nu'ayn al-Asbahani has a book entitled Al-Hilya. Al-Hilya. We'll talk about that in a minute. Don't worry. I'm just going to read quick. فِي عَقِيدَةِ اللَّهُ فِي أَوَّلِهَا طَرِيقَتُنَا طَرِيقَةُ الْمُتَّبِعِينَ لِلْكِتَابِ وَالصُّنَّةِ وَجُمَاعِ الْأُمَّةِ Okay. Oh, I'm good. قال فمما اعتقدوا أن الأحاديث التي تثبت عن النبي تثبت عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم في العرش واستواء الله يقولون بها ويثبتونها من غير تكييف ولا تمثيل ولا تشبيه وأن الله بائن من خلقه والخلق بائنون منه لا يحل فيهم ولا يمتزج بهم وهو مستوى على عرشه في سمائه دون عرضه وخلقه The great scholar of our religion, his name was Abu Nu'aym al-Usbahani. His real name was Ahmed ibn, Abdul, Ahmed ibn Abdullah. The great al-Hafid al-Kabir. And he possessed a lot of works that were very well, famous and beneficial. From them is the book entitled Hilyatul Awliya. Or the, the jewel or the Hilya or the jewels or the jewelry. Of those who are the awliya of Allah. And he was talking about knowledge, of course. في مجلدات كثيرة دلت على اتساع روايته وكثرة مشايخه. As you'll find that that book, حلية الأولياء أبو نعيم الأصبهاني is in a lot of volumes which indicates how well acquainted he was with the narrations and the transmissions of the narrators. And the well abundance and known scholars of our religion and how strong his acquaintance was as far as those books and its information and what those books contain. That that particular book entitled Hilyat al displayed the level of his knowledge and the high level of it. And Makharit al-Hadith wa Shu'abi Turuqan. And of course, bringing all the narrations and the transmissions of where they emanated from and there are different chains. And he has a book entitled Mu'jum al-Sahaba, which is also well known with the students of knowledge, and the characteristics of paradise. And he has a book entitled The Signs or the Clear Concrete Evidences of Prophethood. And he has other works that are very beneficial, which is known with the students of knowledge. You'll find that that great Imam had died fi salati thalathin wa arba'imi'ah 433 after the migration of our Prophet alayhi salatu salam. You'll find that they say that he was accused a little bit of what they call tamash'ur, which is a type of sufiyah. But we know the scholars of the past of what they put forth, forth of those great services. That was well 
Well, if you want to say paid and was way more greater than a little bit of those mistakes that they fell into in regards to that certain little discrepancies in the Akita. But like we said, he was accused of that particular matter. They're not like the affairs of today, which we'll discuss later, inshallah. But the great Imam Hillet al Awliya, or that book, Babu Nuhim al Asbahani, like we said, is still known, is copied, and it's in book form, and it's in about 10 volumes. It's in about what? 10 volumes. And you'll find that from his aqidah, that Shaykh al Islam said concerning him, he said that Abu Naim al Asbahani, that he said about his aqidah and his method, and this is what Shaykh al Islam is trying to establish here. He said, Tariqatuna, Tariqatul Muttabi'in al Kitab al Sunnah. Our method is the methodology of those who followed the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Prophet and the consensus of the Ummah. Qal, and from Mimma Ta'kalu, and what they believed, and what was their belief, is that the narrations that have been established. Upon the Prophet ﷺ, in regards to the throne of Allah and Allah ascending, they say about it, meaning they affirm it, and, we, and they also say it with their tongue. When they say it with their tongue, and when they affirm it, they do it without saying how it is, meaning because they don't have the knowledge of knowing how it is. They don't ask how it is, nor do they liken it with the creation nor without resembling it with the creation. And that Allah is separate and distinct from His creation, and the creation is separate and distinct from Him. And it is not permissible to say that Allah has been merged within the creation, nor is Allah mixed within the creation, and that Allah is above His throne, above the heavens, and He's not in the earth, nor is He with the creation. That was the Aqidah, of Abu Naim al Asbahan, Rahimallah. And you'll find that Shaykh al Islam conveyed his aqidah in this tremendous book entitled Majmu' al Fatawa, and also the book entitled by Shaykh al Islam, there's another book entitled by Shaykh al uh, that was written by Shaykh al Islam called Tadbis al Jahmiyyah. And the other great, great works from Ibn al Qayyim entitled Al Sawa'iq al Mursala, The Sending of Lightning. Upon al Jahmi al Ma'atila, the Sawaq al Mursala, the sending of lightning upon the devious sects who are called the Jahmiya, who negate the attributes of Allah. In those books contains the exact same statement that I just mentioned here upon Abu Nu'im al Asbahani, conveying his aqidah and his belief and his position and how it agreed with the salaf of this ummah. And how, like we said, those matters have been well affirmed by these great scholars who have serviced Allah's religion and put forth great efforts and beneficial works and efforts and sacrifices in order that the Muslims receive the proper guidance. So, you'll find that the great Imam Sheikh Muhammad Al Jamil, he said in this regard, talking about the Aqidah Abu Nu'im al Asbahani. He said about him, now listen. He said, Ma'ashir al Salaf, or Ma'ashir al Atba'i al Salaf. And the Salaf, Bi'atibar al Zaman, the Tariq, Umm al Sahaba, the Tabi'un. Now, read it quickly. Shaykh Muhammad Abad Jami, Rahimallah, that he said about this particular statement by Abu Nu'im al Asbahani in regards to him. He said, The group of the Salaf, meaning those who followed the Salaf, and those who followed those who followed the Salaf, because the Salaf. In consideration of the time and the date, going back to who they are, they are the companions of the Messenger of Allah. They are considered the pious predecessors of this Ummah. And those who follow them, meaning the Sahaba, are called the Tabi'un, because the Tabi'un are the followers. That's what the word Tabi'un in Arabic means, those who follow. The Tabi'un, those who follow the Sahaba, كما تقدم. أو مع تابع التابعين. Then you have those who follow the followers, who are called the Tabi Tabi'in. As for those who come after them, meaning those who come after that, those generations, those first three generations that the Messenger of Allah praised, saying that they were described 
with the characteristic of khayriya, meaning being the best of this ummah. Those who follow them are called salafiyun. They are called, everyone, salafiyun, meaning it's an ascription. And as we know in the Arabic language, a person can attain ascription in different ways, linguistically, in the Arabic language. And from those usage of these words, when you say or have what they call the ya nisba at the end, what they call ya nisba, like amri ki, at the end of it is ya, ya nisba. It's a description. Say amri ki, America. Does it mean that you're a person that believes in America? It's just a description that that was, that was your land. Same thing in regards to the word salafi. The ya at the end of it is called ya nisba, the ya of ascription. You're just describing yourself to a who? To a people. To say that I traverse their path and I make myself distinguished and clear to know that even though there are other Muslims with the name Muslimun, but what makes me distinct from them is the characteristic that I follow the Sahaba. Even though those other groups from the Muslims call themselves Muslim. Because the distinction from them is of the utmost importance. Even though people say that they're Muslim. But we know that there are Muslims out there that are upon what? Deviation. And there are Muslims out there that are upon other convictions, other creeds, other beliefs. And they have what? Perverted ideologies. They are in opposition to the pure Orthodox Islam. And for that reason, those who are upon the truth have to di- make themselves what we want? Distinct. And they have to make themselves what? Clear. And make themselves separated. For those who are not upon the correct path. That's where you'll find the Shaykh, the great Imam Muhammad Aman Jami, goes on to say, Men subun ila salaf wa ila man sabaqahum ila khayr. It's an inscription to the pious predecessors and to, and to those who preceded them to good or to the best of the Sunnah. So he goes on to say, Tariqatul Muttabi'in al Kitab al Sunnah. The path of those who followed the Book of Allah and the Sunnah. They are the Salaf. Our method, meaning نَحْنُ مَعَاشُرَ أَتْبَاعِ salaf. He said, us being the followers of the Salaf, who are called the Salafiyun, طَرِيقَةُ الْمُتَّبِعِينَ Meaning the methodology of those who follow the Kitab and Sunnah, of course, that is the way of the pious predecessors. And he said that we follow them in our regards to our belief and our creed. Keep in mind, brothers and sisters, that the great Imam Abu Naim al Asbahani mentioned the word Salaf. And we just said that he died what year? 433 after the Hijrah. And he used the word Salaf. He used the word Salaf. Tariqatuna, or Atina Tariqatuna, Tariqatul Muttabi'in. Of course, Al Kitab al Salaf Jma'i al Ummah. He said, you'll find that these type of words was, were, were used and known in what he was mentioning. He said, in regards to what we're mentioning here, I just keep up to, I have to move a little quickly. So he said, Tariqatul Muttabi'in al Kitab al Sunnah. He said, the way of those who follow the Book of Allah and some of the Prophet, we follow them. Those who follow the Kitab al Sunnah, we follow them, and they are our, our Salaf. So he goes on to say, for what we also follow is the consensus of this ummah. The consensus that there is no difference in, as far as division, is the consensus of the companions. And we know the consensus of the companions is a proof and evidence in our religion. As the Sahaba and those who follow them, you'll find that they are gathered upon an affair or they're, they're united upon a matter that's called a consensus meaning that they are unanimously gathered upon a certain matter what is the matter that they are gathered upon or united upon or they have a consensus upon what is it except to narrate those narrations of, of Allah's attributes how they came imrah nusus sifat ala bawahidiha to narrate the text of those characteristics of Allah upon its apparent meaning. Narrating that they came 
and to convey it as it came and to mention it in a manner in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed to his prophet and with the message of Allah taught the companions was to mention these narrations in regards to Allah's names and attributes narrate them as they came and in a manner that's upon its apparent meaning not twisting them and saying no it means something else Allah's hand for example meaning his bound it doesn't mean an, in the characteristic of hand you'll find that that's a distortion that none of the companions did you'll never find a text where the companions of the message of Allah sallallahu that they said no Allah's hand does not mean a hand it means this it means something totally different you'll never find that they did that what they did was they conveyed it and they mentioned it meaning the text of Allah's names and attributes, mentioning them, them, mentioning them, and their apparent meaning, without any distortions, and without any negations. Just as the great Imam al-Awza'i, who's the Imam of Ahl al-Sham, Abdul Rahman ibn Amr al-Awza'i, wa Muhammad ibn Hassan al-Shaybani, who's the Sahib of Abu Hanifa, and other than them. You'll find that they conveyed the consensus. And like we said, the word consensus, meaning what they were united upon what they gathered upon, what they agreed upon. That's the meaning of the word ijma'ah. Ijma'ah meaning that they were a unanimous agreement without any difference. Ijma'ah tabi'i wa ijma'ah sahaba. You'll find that the ijma'ah, the consensus of the agreement of the followers of the sahaba and the united, unanimous agreement of the companions, companions and the unanimous consensus of the tabi'i, tabi'i the ijma'ah sahaba. For you'll find that those who follow the Sahaba, as we mentioned, who are called the Tabi'un, their consensus follows the consensus of the companions. For Jumar Sahaba, for the consensus of the companions, they will study what they rely upon, and their consensus is the Book of Allah and the Sunnah. And the Message of Allah made the agreement of the Sahaba be united upon an affair, considered an argument and an evidence in our religion. It's considered a hijjah. What Dalil proves that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, established a matter that if his companions are united upon, upon a matter that's considered a proof in our religion? Except you'll find that the Messenger of Allah conveyed the authentic narration where he said, لا تجتمع أمتي على الضلالة. He said, You'll never find that my Ummah will gather upon his guidance. You'll find that they say that from that hadith from the Messenger of Allah, saying that the companions, that they were united upon a matter which they were united upon in regards to belief. That that's a proof in Islam based upon the message of Allah Sallallahu mentioned concerning that his ummah would never gather upon or never be united upon what? Misguidance. They would never do that. From them is, and at the head of them is the companions. When they gathered upon an affair, that was a proof. That was considered a proof in our religion based upon, as we know, the establishment of our source in which is considered proof and evidence is what? The Book of Allah, the Sunnah and Messenger of Allah, and what? The consensus of the companions. There is no consensus that's stronger than the ijma' of the companions. He said that the narrations which have been affirmed upon the message of Allah regarding the throne of Allah, meaning its existence, and where it is, as far as it being above. As we know, the throne of Allah is above the heavens, and it's bigger than the heavens and earth, and all the seven heavens, and all the seven earths, because there are seven earths, yes. Fil Aush, it says, Fil Aush wa Stiwa Illah, it says in regards, and we're talking about the statement here, everyone, this is still the statement of Abu Na'im al Usfahani. Rahimallah. You'll find the great Imam Muhammad al Jami is explaining the statement by the Imam Usfahan. He's saying, the belief of the companions. So notice that he's using the companions as what? A proof. And those who follow the companions. So listen to what he says. For what they believed. So he's using the companions as a what? Proof. As a hujjah. He said that the narrations that have been solidified, meaning authentically reported and transmitted upon the Prophet ﷺ concerning the throne of Allah and Allah being above or Allah ascending 
Yaqulun, they say it, they verbalize it, and they affirm it, meaning they believe it. Because we know that the companions heard the great statements, the prophetic statements of our Prophet. From them, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَمَّا خَلَقَ الْخَلْقِ كَتَبَ فِي كِتَابِ الْمَوْدُوعٍ عِنْدَهِ فَوْقَ الْعَرْشِ إِنَّ رَحْمَتِي سَبَقَتْ غَضَبِي This authentic narration, which has been Bukhari and others, that the Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu wasalam said the authentic hadith, Indeed Allah, when He created the creation, and He had written in a book that is put, where is it? It says in the hadith, it's with Allah above the throne. It's with Allah above the throne. It was written in that book, my mercy has preceded my anger. This book that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written that his mercy precedes his anger. It says it's that it's above, it's with Allah above the, above the arsh. So, based upon this hadith, what does it affirm, everyone? It affirms the throne of Allah, the arsh. It also affirms that Allah is above it, that Allah is ascended above it, and that Allah is above His creation. Because we know that the throne of Allah is above the creation. Yuthbitun wa yuthminun bi rahmatillah. And this hadith also affirms that the believers believe in the mercy of Allah. They also extract from this hadith that they believe in the anger of Allah. All of that in a manner that befits His Majesty. We do not twist it. We don't say, no, it does not mean this an actual, that Allah is not above. It doesn't mean that. So your person would say, where's the throne then? We talked about this about seven months ago. We said, where's the throne of Allah? Because if you affirm where the throne of Allah is, then you can affirm where Allah is. Because Allah has affirmed that He's above the throne. So you would ask the person, you say, Allah is not above. Another way you can combat the argument is by saying to them, Tayyip, tell me where the throne is. Is the throne everywhere? Is the throne in the creation? Is the throne mixed within the human beings? The throne of Allah. Is the throne of Allah? Mixed within the gutter, mixed within human feces. Where is this great throne that Allah has affirmed in His book? And the authentic son of the message of Allah that is affirmed and is bigger than everything. And to the point where Ibn Abbas said it cannot even be measured its size of how great it is. In that comparison to the heavens and the earth and everything that's in it is like considered the rain or a or still rain thrown in the middle of the desert of the desert. That's how small it is. Comparison to the throne of Allah. Where's this great throne? That the message that Ibn Abbas said that you qadr qadr, that it cannot be measured in size. Where is it? They have no answer. Because you have to say, Allah is, first you will say to them, Don't you believe Allah has a throne? Doesn't Allah mention that in his authentic in his book, in an authentic sunnah? Yes. Where is this throne? Where? And Allah has affirmed that He's above that throne. All of these are affairs that are what? Proofs and evidences that clearly establish what this great Imam Abu Na'im al Asbahani was mentioning. So he goes on and says,
الله أكبر الله أكبر اللهم رب هذه الدعوة التامة والصلاة القائمة التي محمد الوصيلة والفضيلة وبعث المقام محمد الذي وعدت طيب so so much of the statement or what continue to explain the statement of the great Imam Abu Nu'aym al-Usbahani rahimahullah of his aqeedah so number one let's read the statement again and examine exactly what he said so tariqatuna tariqatun muttabi'in he said our method was the method of those who followed the kitab and sunnah who's he speaking about the sahaba I'll say it again our method is the method of those who followed the Kitab and Sunnah. Who's he speaking about? He's talking about the companions. Who are those who followed? Who else who followed the companions are called what? The Tabi'un. The Tabi'un. طيب. He said, our method is the method of those who followed the Kitab and Sunnah. He's talking about the Sahaba who are everyone to self. Right, everyone? That's where the description to them being Salafi. Tayyip. Now, listen to what he says. Our method is the same method of those who follow the Kitab and Sunnah and the consensus of this Ummah. When you hear consensus of this Ummah, he's talking about which part of the Ummah? Also, a simple answer the Sahaba, the consensus of the companions. That was the most altbalt, the most precise and accurate ijma'ah. was the ijma'ah to sahaba. It was the consensus and what the companions of the Messenger of Allah were unified upon and what they agreed upon. That was the most mundabat, the most accurate consensus in which there was no consensus stronger than that one. Of course, the tabi'een, their ijma' was also strong. But we know the tabi'een of those who followed the sahaba, their ijma' was the ijma' of the companions. Their consensus was the consensus of what? The companions. Which made also their consensus very strong. Is it clear everyone? So, Abu Nu'aym al-Asbahadi, rahimahullah, is mentioned that our method is the method of those who follow the kitab and sunnah and the companions or the consensus of the ummah and like we said the most accurate the most accurate ijma' is the ijma' of the companions the ijma' of the sahaba what they agreed upon and what they united upon and what they gathered upon that affair is a proof in our religion As we mentioned, it said the hadith number one. And if you want, you can go back to the book of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioned in this book in too many ayats. From them, it's the ayat, وَمَا يُشَاقِقَ الرَّسُولُ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا تَبَيَّنَ لَهُ الْهُدَى وَيَتَّبِعْ غَيْرُ سَبِيلِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ That ayat. Whoever opposes the messenger after the clear guidance has been made, وَمَا يَتَّبِعْ Excuse me. وَمَا يُشَاقِقَ الرَّسُولُ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا تَبَيَّنَ لَهُ الْهُدَى now listen to the part the ayah. They follow other than the way of the believers. The meaning of other than the way of the believers, here, the meaning of it, if you go back to the commentary of what Ibn Kathir mentions, the meaning of believers here is the companions. You follow a belief other than their belief. To let you know that the Sahaba were unified where? In belief. And their creed and belief, they were united in their belief. Affairs of fiqh, there's a little bit more details that we don't have time to discuss. But the most vital and the most important of all issues that people are united where? In creed. In the fundamentals. Unify. Solidify. Until the point where Allah gave a threat as a result of those who abandoned their way in this particular verse. Is it clear, everyone? Tayyip, another ayah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to Luqman quickly. I think it's ayah number three, either two or three. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Surah Al-Luqman. 
ولن جاهدك على ان تشرك به ما ليس لك به علم فلا تطعهما وصاحبهما وصاحبهما في الدنيا معروفا واتبع سبيل من اناب الي واتبع سبيل من اناب الي the point of the ayat of Luqman where it says follow the path of those who made tawbah to, to me follow the path of those who made tawbah to me you'll find that al-alama ibn al-qayyim rahimahullah said about those that Allah commanded to follow the path of those who made tawbah to him was the companions they were the companions another ayat Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in his book about the companions and following their method is the way of salvation in a proper way where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in his book فَإِنْ آمَنُوا بِمِثْلِ مَا آمَنْتُمْ بِهِ فَقَدْ اِهْتَدَلُوا فَإِنْ تَوَلَّا فَإِنْ تَوَلَّوا فَإِنَّمَا هُمْ فِي شِقَاقِ فَسِيَكْ فِي كَهْمُ اللَّهُ وَالسَّمِيعُ الْعَلِيمُ سِبْغَةَ اللَّهُ وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ مِنَ اللَّهِ سِبْغَةَ وَنَحْنُ لَهُ عَبِدُ and this is even in creed and in regards to iman, both. It's in both. If they believe similar to how you believe, meaning O companions, then they are rightly guided. Then they are rightly guided. And if they turn away, then know most definitely they are in what? Disunity. Fi shiqaq. Fi shiqaq meaning they're in fractions. Meaning they become in a state of disunity, where they've been broken off into different what? Fractions, parties, and schisms. Those type of parties, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has dispraised them and considered them in a state of disunity based upon the fact that they abandoned the way of the companions. And if you abandon the way of companions, that is the greatest form of what? Disunity. You, now you consider it from those who are considered Hizb. 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 Hizb is a what? Pardon. Group. Sect. And that's why they're called Hizbi. Hizbi. It's a description to the people who are deviated. But the people who have what? Become a partner. Or people that become a what? A sect. Or people that become a what? Fraction. That's why they're called Hizbi. Why they call Hizbi Yun, everyone? Because it's an inscription to those who have abandoned the way of the companions or they have fell into some type of opposition of the principles of the creed of the Salaf. But anyway, so let's make it clear so we can finish. Stop love because we're almost done. The great Imam Abu Nu'im, we're almost finished. He says, Our method is Tariqatul Muttabi'in al Kitab al Sunnah wa Jma'il Ummah. And for what they believe, from Mimma Taqadu, and al Ahadith al Lati, Tafmutu an al Nabi, Salawatullahi, wa Salamahu alayhi wa Barakatuh, fil Arsh. That's been affirmed upon our Prophet concerning the throne and the ascension of Allah. They say it with their tongue. And he affirmed it. Now listen to the principle. He goes on to say, exactly what Shaykh al-Islam mentioned, in al aqidah al wasitiyah Now listen to what Abu Nu'im al-Asfahani says. He says, without any what? Takif. Of saying how it is. Because no one knows how the Aushah of Allah is. Except how the Messenger of Allah, when he gave descriptions of it. But did we see it? Did we affirm these affairs? No. But however, he's talking about Allah Himself. I'm sorry, everyone. Abu Naim al Asfahani is talking about Allah. Even though the Prophet did give certain descriptions of the Aush. But as far as the attributes of Allah, then we don't know. The attributes of Allah, Abu Naim al Asfahani said the exact same thing Shaykh al said in the Aqidah to Wasiqiyah. Their words are the same. It's almost as if Shaykh al-Islam was what? Copied. Which is good. Because it shows that they are all in, in harmony in regards to what? Their belief. Means the same. So he said in regards to Allah's throne, of course that's affirmed. 
But the affair of Allah being above the throne and Allah's ascension, now this is what he goes on to say. They affirm it without saying how it is. Because they don't know how Allah ascended. Nor resembling it with the creation, nor liking it with the creation. So, the people of Sunnah affirm the throne of Allah. That Allah has a throne. And that that throne will be bought and it will be carried by the angels. And it will also be carried by Prophet Musa. In a manner that Allah knows best of how it will be on the day of resurrection. This throne, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informed that those angels will be carrying his throne on the day of resurrection, shows the angels will be carrying the throne and that affair pertaining to the throne, Allah will be above it. Based upon the belief of, of those Muslims that possess the deviant, perverted ideologies of philosophy, the Greek philosophy, they believe that Allah will come on the day of resurrection will be nothing above the arsh. Which absolutely doesn't make any sense. How is it on the day of resurrection there will be carriers of the throne of the arsh but Allah won't be above it? Which doesn't make any, make any sense. Which is absolute absurd. Which is like we said, the utmost of what? Foolishness. That the angels will be carrying the throne of Allah on the day of resurrection. And Allah will be above it. That's based upon the creed of those who have adopted Greek philosophy. And has penetrated their hearts until it what? Affected them in the most satanic way. To the point where they deny that Allah is above the throne. Those type of affairs, like we said, he goes on to say, Allah being above the throne without saying how it is, nor asking how it is, and without resembling with the creation, nor resembling it with the creation. And he says, he said they do not liken it with the creation by them saying, for example, verily the ascension of Allah is like my ascension, meaning me going up the mountain. That's res resemblance. That's impermissible. That's kufr. Is it clear, everyone? To say that Allah ascends above this, this, let's just for example, this minbar. He ascends above the, the, above the heavens just as I said about the minbar. That's resemblance, that's kufr. Is it clear, everyone? Fight. Well, let tish be. Without likening it with the creation, of course. Without them saying, of course, Allah's resemblance or his throne, or excuse me, I'm sorry, dissension resembles my dissension. We said that Shaykh Islam Taymiyyah was lied upon to the point where they say in Damascus, from the great scholar of Damascus, his name, was Bahjatul Baytar. It was from the scholars of the past of Dimishq, from Damascus. His name was Bahjatul al Baytar. The great Imam Muhammad al Jami and Sheikh Salih Fawzan mentions, mentions him. Bahja al Baytar. Al Baytar. Ba ya ta alif ra. Baytar. Baytar. Bahjatul al Baytar al Dimishqi. He's from Damascus. Bahjat al Baytar said that Shaykh al Islam, and he meant they, they just the fabricated lie upon him. And you'll find that they still use this lie to this, this day, this very moment, they still say this thing, this story. They said that Shaykh al Islam said that Allah's dissension is similar to my dissension upon the minbar of mine, or this minbar of, of, of this here. So he descended upon the, he descended, descended from the above the minbar to the below it, and saying, This is how Allah descends. That's takif. That's explaining how Allah descends. So, this statement still to this day, they accuse him of saying it. Bahjat al Baytar in his tarikh mentioning this. Like we said, the great Imam, may Allah preserve him, Sheikh Hassan al mentioned in his book about the aqidah of the Mujaddideen, those who revived the pure Orthodox Islam across history. And he was mentioned in the aqidah of the Imam Ahmed, he was mentioned in the Tajdeed. Of Shaykh Al Sun Taymiyyah, he was mentioned in Tajdeed, Muhammad Abdul Wahab in that book. But anyway, 
He said, Behjat al Baytaq said that this is a lie upon Shaykh al Islam. How we know it's a lie? Because Shaykh al Islam, at that time, he, he was where, everyone? He was in prison. They imprisoned him. Now look to the point, they imprisoned him and they still was lying upon him. And we know he was in prison and he was in prison unjustly. They, they oppressed him. To the point where he even came with fabricated what? Lies in order to describe it to him so they can make it look as if he fell into kufr. And he even contradicted himself. Because we know Shaykh al-Islam was the greatest of those who warned against what? Resembling Allah with the creation. And naming any name or any what? Attribute of Allah. Those type of affairs, Bahjut al-Baytal said that was a lie. Shaykh al-Islam wasn't even there at the time and the date that they said he did it. He wasn't there. He was, in, he was in what? He was in prison. Those type of fabricated lies, you'll find that still to this day, they still use against them. You'll find that they still continue to use those same fabricated lies of those who are the enemies of the pure Aqidah and the pure Islam. To this very moment of ours. They still use it. So he goes on to say, and we'll stop here, inshallah. He says, يَقُولْ أَبُوْ النُعَيْنَ الْأَصْبَحَانِ وَأَنَّ اللَّهِ بَائِنٌ مِنْ خَلْقِهِ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is separate from His creation. Meaning He's not mixed with them. They are not with Him, within Him. And He is not within them. Is it clear? هَكَذَا يَعْتَقِدَ السَّلَفِ وَالْخَلْقِ بَائِنُونَ مِنْ That the creation is not mixed with Him. And he's not merged with them or united with them. Within meaning within their physical habit. And he's not mixed with them nor merged with them. As-salaf karraru hadihi al-ibara. Raddan al-hululiyin al-qailin. He said that you'll find that the salaf constantly repeated this statement in order to rebuttal or refute the, the group called al-hululiyun. Those who believe that Allah has been united or merge within the creation by them saying, Allah is halun ma'ana fil ard. Allah is what? With us, united within the earth. Or that Allah is everywhere. Which is dangerous speech which indicates the lack of knowledge of, or the lack of proper knowledge of the servant in regards to his Lord. Subhanahu. Allah is known that he's above us, above all of his creation, separate from them. The statement and the belief that Allah is everywhere or in everything does not befit His Majesty Subhanahu. And it shows the lack of knowledge or the misinformation of, of the in, inappropriate or inaccurate knowledge that the servant possesses in regards to his Lord. To the point where we mentioned the statement lessons ago upon the great Imam Abdullah ibn al Mubarak. He's asked that same question again. He said, بِمَا نَعْرِفُ رَبَّنَا He said, but how do we know our Lord? Meaning, where is He? He said, بِأَنَّهُ فَوْقَ الْعَرْشِ Allah is above the throne. فَوْقَ السَّمَاءِ السَّابِعَةِ عَلَى الْعَرْشِ بَائِنُ مِخَلْقِ Allah is above the seven heaven, meaning above the throne. And He is not mixed with His creation. He is separate from them. They are not within Him, nor are they within Him. He is not within them, nor are they within him. And if that was the case, that would this that would necessitate everyone. Now listen to the fiqh of the salaf. If Allah was mixed within the creation, and all the creation was mixed within him, that would necessitate that the devil was in him too. If the shaitan and iblis is mixed with Allah. And that Allah is mixed within shaitan. Does that make any sense? Those are the affairs that you have to mention. In which the great Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal Shaybani in his book called al Rad al Jahmiya, he mentioned this type of argument. He said, if you say that Allah is mixed within the creation, the creation is mixed with Allah, that would necessitate that the devil is within Allah also. Is the devil within Allah? Is the jinn within Allah? Is the shayateen inside of Allah? And Allah is inside of the devil? And Allah is inside of the shayateen? If they would have so called used Rationality and logical so-called so-called logical arguments. This is a so-called logical argument. Okay, use your logic here. Does that make any sense in your mind? 
So you'll find that they always try to use so-called, use logic. Okay, we're using a so-called rational, logical argument. This right here is not acceptable. No one was going to say that the devil is mixed with Allah and Allah is mixed within the devil. Which is absolute nonsense. It's absolute absurd. And it's absolute what? It's absolute, it in itself, and the statement is satanic. That a person would even believe this nonsense. So that's the reason why you'll find that they mention the say in this regard of the great Imam Abdullah ibn Mubarak. He said, Rahimallah, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is separate and distinct from his creation. And these are from the proofs that they utilize. He said, Wala halan fiham, la fi ahli aw, wala fi ahli samawati hi kulliha, belillahu subhanahu jalla shadnu, foka jami'in makhluqat. Rather, Allah is above all of the creation. And for the lace of he that in la he shake um in the hut, min hutilla, well, if he hutilla shake um in that in la. Allah, you nazza, and you tezaj, men and you tezaj, or you tell it be hutte. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that he's glorified, that he would be mixed with the creation, that the creation would be what? Mixed within him. And this is the last statement of the stock, inshallah. So, the statement of Abu Naim al Aswahadi. And this is the last one where we stop at the statement here because he concluded the chapter by saying, he said, our belief is that Allah is ascended above the throne, of course, after he created the heavens and the earth and that which is between them with his six days. Then he informed us that he ascended above the throne and that he is above the heavens, that he is fi uluwe, and that Allah will continue to be above. As we know, the characteristic of highness Aboveness, loftiness, is a sifa to thatiyah. It's a characteristic of his essence, meaning Allah is always above. And, and when the people, inshallah, if Allah allows all of us to enter paradise, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us in you from its inhabitants, that Allah will still be above his creation. Until the point where the narration says, when the inhabitants of paradise have settled in their dwelling places eternally. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us you from now. That when they settle and take their dwelling places forever, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned in the narration of the great Sahabi who's from Rome. His name was Suhaib al-Rumi. Radiallahu an. Suhaib al-Rumi. He said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, He said, He said, Do you want something that I can increase you in? You want more? And they say, did you not save us from the hellfire? Did you not make our faces white? Did you not save us from the hellfire and the blazing fire and put us in eternal bliss? How could we want more than that? Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, will give them something greater than all of that. He says where he will remove the hijab. The hijab of light until they will look upon Allah. The narration says even in paradise they will be looking up. They'll be looking up. So why would they need a need to look what? Up. It says, they will, They'll still be looking up. Which is to show what? Allah is always what? Allah is always above His creation. Even in the hereafter, Allah will be above. If that's not the biggest delay to show that Allah is above, then what is? It says, Duna Abdihi wa Khalqi. Last statement. It says here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not within his creation. He's not mixed within the earth. He's not in them at all. He says, Bal Duna ayyakun fi jofi samawat. Yalabatul nas yat kalyatabadu ila adhalihim. Ida kalahu, kalahu, subhanahu jalla shadnu. A amintum man fi sama. Anna samawati tahwi tahwi la. He said the problem is that a lot of those that they say or they think, or rather, this is the last part, we'll stop here, inshallah. He said the negation here of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of course, not being mixed within the creation, nor being in the earth, of course, meaning that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of course, is contained within the directions around him. This is the problem here. He said, because certain people, when they hear the statement that Allah is above the heavens, what comes to their minds, if they, if they read the verse 
Do you not believe that the one who's above the heavens, that what comes to their mind is resemblance of Allah to creation? How? By thinking that the, that the heavens contain Allah. And that Allah is within the heavens and that the distances around him contain him or confine him. What did the people do when they did, when they what? Thought this thought about Allah. First you have bad thoughts about Allah even though you think you're glorifying him. That Allah will be confined to the creation. Or that the creation will surround him from the other directions. This is what they think. And as a result of it they say no, Allah is what? Not above. Because what comes to my mind and my rationality is that if Allah is above, logic necessitates or dictates that, that the distances confine him. Or that the distances contain him. What did they do, everyone? They resembled what? Allah with what? The creation. That's the first step until they fell to what? The second step, which is what, everyone? Negation. He said, this is number read, leave off of this great statement by the great Imam Muhammad Abad al He says, هَذَا يَجِبُ وَيُفْهَمْ الْمَعْنِ الصَّحِيحِ it's so bigger that we understand the correct meaning. That Allah, do you not believe, meaning the ayah, Surah Al-Mulk, Surah Al-Mulk. Do you not believe in the one who's above the heavens? Meaning, do you not believe in the one who's above everything? Everything. Above all of the creation. As we told, talked about the word, عرش, العرش, that the word sama. In the Arabic language, can even be used for the throne. Because the throne can be, be called Sama. Anything that's high above can be called Sama. It is not just the what? The clouds or the heavens and the earth. Anything that's above you linguistically in the Arabic language can be called Sama. Is it clear, everyone? So, do you not believe of the one who's above the throne? Men out of Sama. Now, listen to what the great Imam Muhammad Ahmad said. He said, Al-Murad is Sama al arsh What's intended by the word Sama in this context here is the throne. Because Allah is above where? The throne. And he's affirmed, excuse me, he has informed about himself that he's above the throne and our messenger Sallallahu conveyed the exact same thing. That Allah is above the throne. From the profound statements of today, it's the great Imam, Imam in which I said in some of his lessons, Shaykh Ali Nasr Faqihi, Allah. When I came to him and he was one of the people that was responsible in the Mujama'ah of Quran, where the Quran is made, meaning the Quran is, is copied and is checked, and everyone in the dunya receives it, all over the dunya. He used to be those who were in charge. So I entered upon him. And I asked him a couple of questions. From the answers, me and uh, Sheikh Dr. Abdullah Al Ahmani, Hafidullah, me and Abdullah was together. Abdullah Al Ahmani from the UK, from, originally from Morocco, but everybody knows Abdullah back and forth from the UK to Morocco. We have all preserved. Many, many, me and Abdullah came and entered the bar Sheikh Ali Nasser Faqihi. And we sat down. Sheikh Ali Nasser Faqihi said, he said, even those who believe that Allah, is, for example, their denial that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not above because their so-called mind says that if you say that Allah is above, that means he's contained and he's confined by the directions around him. He said, even from the aspect of logic, that's rejected. He said, because Allah is informed that he's bigger than everything. He's bigger than everything. <laughs> the distance is everything. The creation, everything. The out, everything. Allah is bigger than everything. Is it clear, everyone? As we know, the hadith of Ibn Abbas said, The arsh of Allah, la yuqaddaru qadru, cannot be measured its size. Right? Cannot be measured its size. That's the throne of Allah. That's how huge it is. And we know that the throne of Allah in comparison to the heavens and the earth and how huge that is in regards to us is like we said, a little ring being thrown in the middle of a desert. desert. That's the throne of Allah compared to the heavens and the earth. What about Allah himself? 
You understand everyone? He said, from that aspect, this even doesn't make sense. Allah is bigger than everything. He encompasses the creation. The creation does not encompass him or confine him or constrict him or contain him at all because he's bigger than everything. Is it clear, everyone? Okay, we'll stop here. Any questions about the class? Any questions about the class? We'll stop here continue tomorrow. There's another statement by Abu al Subhani Rahimullah. We'll continue explaining that uh, tomorrow. Just follow uh, uh, What year did uh, Abu Muhammad was behind that? 433. Four hundred and thirty three after the Hijrah, after the migration. Any other questions about the lesson? This might be the last class for this month. Because the month of Ramadan is starting soon, inshallah. So tomorrow, tomorrow will be the last class for this month. Is it clear everyone? Due to the fact that Ramadan is expected either, I'm thinking I gotta look for the site in either Tuesday or Wednesday. I think they said the 29th is Tuesday, maybe. The 29th night. It's either Tuesday or Wednesday, I have to check. But at any rate, that will be next week. And for this week, tomorrow will be the last class for this particular uh, lesson, just for this month. It will resume after Ramadan, inshallah. So don't forget, last tomorrow we'll resume or we'll do the last class tomorrow. We we will we will have class tomorrow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so keep that clear. Talk, we'll stop here. Wassallallahu wassallam wa baraka ala nabiyyina Muhammad.